Hey everyone, and welcome to Cooking Companion TV. I'm Jenna Edwards, and this is a recipe demo of bouillabaisse. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I take some shortcuts here to make it approachable for your average home cook. So truthfully, it's not entirely authentic, but my French husband told me it was okay. So it's okay for you too. We start with heating four tablespoons of olive oil over medium heat and slicing one medium onion into half moons and then add them to the oil. We'll also add a third of a medium fennel bulb also sliced and one whole leek sliced. Since we in our household don't use fennel bulbs that often, when I buy one, I pre-slice it for future uses like bouillabaisse. The Ziploc bag is a little bouillabaisse kit with pre-sliced fennel, leek, some parsley stems, and some orange peel. Because the texture of the vegetables doesn't matter, because I'm straining it all out, I can freeze things like this so I'm not running to the store to buy specialty items. So you do need an orange peel. Um, I like to use a strip about an inch wide from the entire circumference of an orange with none of the pith. And I'm just showing you this, it doesn't go in yet. While the onions, leek, and fennel soften and slightly brown, I need to smash and peel two to three garlic cloves and measure out my pastis, a quarter of a cup. You could also measure out a cup of white wine, but it is optional in my book. We decide not to use that much white wine. We'd rather drink it. Once you start the mixture in the pot and see a little browning on the bottom, pour in the pastis and wine if you're using it to scrape off the browned bits and let the alcohol cook off for three to five minutes. Then add in two to three stems of parsley, parsley, which is completely optional, along with the orange peel. And a can of diced tomatoes. This is another freezer stash of uh, extra crushed tomatoes. Crushed tomatoes makes the broth really tomato heavy, which isn't ideal, but it's also not terrible. So I'm gonna cover my pot so I can use the steam to cook down the frozen tomato brick. After a few minutes, I'll add in a bay leaf, a couple sprigs of fresh thyme, a pinch of hot paprika or cayenne, two generous pinches of saffron. Give it a stir and let it keep simmering together. There's not much guidance for cooking time. This is one of those things that gets better the longer you let it go, but it also works for you know a quick throw together. Now we'll add store-bought seafood stock. I love the idea of homemade fish stock, but it is so hard to find fish head and bones, even in New York City. I'm using four cups of the stock for this recipe. You could do just three cups and be fine. Stir it all together, bring it to a boil, and reduce to a simmer. And let it go for 30 to 45 minutes. And while that goes, let's make the rui. That's like a spicy aioli, aioli that you slather onto a crusty baguette to dip into the broth. It is absolutely integral to bouillabaisse. So we'll take two tablespoons of panko breadcrumbs or regular breadcrumbs and two tablespoons of mayonnaise. This needs to be a mayo you really like because it will carry this whole thing. A dash of cayenne and a pinch of paprika or just something red and spicy to taste. A small pinch of saffron, although I didn't feel like it added much to the taste and it's not a great use of saffron. A pinch of salt and one clove of garlic grated into a paste. I think grating works best in raw applications rather than mincing so you don't get these little chunks of raw garlic in your bite. Now use the back of a spoon to mush it all together. If you don't have mayo, you can make an emulsion with an egg yolk and oil. Uh, that requires using a food processor or a blender though. The breadcrumbs give the rui some structure and as it gets stiff, you'll stir in a couple uh, spoonfuls of the broth to thin it out and give it some extra flavor and color. I probably added in four more uh, spoonfuls when all was said and done. When you think the broth is cooked enough, Strain out all the vegetables using a fine mesh strainer lined with wet cheesecloth. So you can use the back of a spoon 
to push out all the flavor while keeping the broth silky and smooth. You can freeze the broth at this point and just buy seafood when you want the full dish. So it may not taste like much yet. Adding in the seafood transforms the broth. When you're ready to cook the seafood, add in the mollusks first, like clams and mussels. I'm using six clams to serve two people. I would also usually use about six mussels. These will simmer for about five minutes before they start to open up. If a clam or mussel does not open up after being cooked, do not eat it, throw it away. While they cook, I'll split a lobster tail into two. Lobster is an extra bit, but it serves so prettily that we can't help ourselves but include it. Okay, so my clam is starting to open, so I'll add the fish because that takes some extra time too. Now I'm using sea bass, and usually bouillabaisse is more fish than, than shellfish. You can really stock up with cod and snapper and sole. It is so nutritious. So give this another five minutes to poach in the broth. And now look at our clams fully opened. The fish is floating at the top. So I'll venture to say that they're pretty much finished. And now we'll add in the lobster because they don't take long to fully cook and they easily overcook. And the same with the shrimp. I like to add them in last and then turn off the heat so they can cook in the residual heat of the broth. To serve, you'll ladle the broth into bowls and then individually place in the shellfish and fish. Don't even try to fish around the pot for the pieces with a ladle. Toast some slices of baguette and generously spread on the rui. And look how orange it gets after some of that extra broth. That texture should be like a stiff gel, but spicy and creamy. My broth here is a touch thin. I probably used too much stock and I didn't let it reduce enough but the flavor is there. You can even freeze the cooked seafood. I suggest removing it from the broth before reheating so you don't overcook the seafood. And then you add it back into the hot broth just before serving to warm it up. That's it for this recipe demo of Easy Bouillabaisse. Get the ingredient list below or at cookingcompaniontv.com slash bouillabaisse. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to this channel for more demos just like this. I'm Jenna Edwards and thanks for watching.